You join me here in the middle of the 2019 SEMA show, where just like every year, this is our chance to see the automakers do things just a little bit differently. There's perhaps no better example of that than Honda, which has a mix of old, new, and just straight up crazy in their booth this year. So let's check it out and see what's going on. So we're gonna start here because out of all the cars in this booth, this one has to be my favorite. It's old school, but everything that could be changed on this car was. So it's a Honda N600, which is the first car that Honda imported in the United States right around 1968, 1969. And originally that N600 had a two cylinder engine making about 36 horsepower. So now it has a VFR engine from a Honda bike it's a V4 engine, it's making 115 horsepower and it revs to 12,000 RPM. Coupled up with that VFR bike engine, believe it or not, actually is the bike's original six-speed transmission, although they now have it with paddle shifters behind the wheel. Uh, I was just speaking with the owner and in terms of performance, they don't really have a quoted zero to 60 time or top speed, but he said, hypothetically, it's geared to hit 127 miles per hour, though he himself hasn't done that. The power is now sent to the rear wheels, different from the original front wheel drive configuration. The suspension is from a first generation Miata. Uh, the seats are out of a Polaris Razor because of course they are. The whole mentality here the owner was telling me is anything that could fit with the car they chose. So everything has been shortened and narrowed to accommodate this car, which the footprint is like that of an original Mini. It's absolutely tiny. Um, the bumpers are actually out of a 1967 Camaro. And again, just like the suspension from that first gen Miata, they shorten the bumpers and they shave them down as well to accommodate the car's small size. The curb weight right now in its current state is just 1,410 pounds. Can you imagine that for a second? Revving to 12,115 horsepower, and 1,400 pounds in a car with this size footprint. It's absolutely insane, and I just love the way they threw it together. So then we get to the overlanding stuff. Now, overlanding, of course, is a trend that keeps exploding, taking your car, in this case, a crossover, and going off the beaten path, right? Well, Honda brought two examples of the 2020 CRV, two flavors of it. This is the gas-powered car, and then over here is a hybrid car, and each of those vehicles is to some degree an overlanding special, but this is the one that has been completely kitted out by J-Sport. We've seen overlanding passports, pilots, ridgelines, Honda's more rugged vehicles, but a CRV it doesn't make much sense until you see it in real life. CRV has been lifted one and a half inches, it has KMC wheels, big Nitto off-road tires as well. The wrap around the car is actually national park centric. So as you look closer, you see Bryce Canyon, Mesa Verde, the Grand Canyon. It's national parks from all over the world. And then of course you get like some of the topography stuff as well. It's a pretty cool look. I think this would get quite a bit of attention if you are out there overlanding. Of course, you gotta have the roof nest tent on top of the car, because if we're overlanding, we're sleeping in our cars, damn it. You get to the back of your CRV, you're ready to set up shop for the weekend. You got your tent set up, everything else. We swing out this tailgate, extra gas cans, things like that. Extra storage. I don't know where you're gonna put all your bags and stuff when you go camping, but extra storage in here. Throw your clothes in here, extra tools, anything you need, cooking equipment, food for the weekend. And then right next here is my favorite part. It's a cooler, it's a cooler and a freezer. So Honda has it loaded up with waters right now because that's what you need. Freezer, generator, you can plug in your phone, any accessories you need for the weekend everything you need in the back of your trunk to do some serious overlanding in your CRV. Why not? So we started with the old school, we continued over to overlanding, and now we're finishing with the new school. We have a 10th generation Honda Civic Si that has been completely modified to be a drift car. So of course you have a Honda Civic Si, standard front wheel drive setup. In this case, to be a drift car, they moved it rear wheel drive, obviously, and the power, 926 brake horsepower to the wheels. So naturally, to make a drift car, you have to change everything about a vehicle. In this case, they start with the Honda K24 engine, and they have some pretty serious engine upgrades surrounding the car, including a huge aftermarket Garrett turbo, direct port nitrous injection into that turbo, uh, and a bunch of other stuff going on as well. The Civic Si also features a NASCAR spec, four-speed transmission, uh, carbon fiber drive shaft, 
and an independent rear suspension setup that's rated for 1,000 plus horsepower. The brakes, in case you were wondering, front and rear Willwood four piston calipers and 13 inch rotors. And the tires, although they will be shredded, are Falcon 615K tires. Fronts are 265, 35, 18s, and the rears are 295, 40, 18 inch tires.